One of the questions I hear a lot from my friends and family is how on earth do you get up so early in the morning? For those who don't know me, my day usually starts from around 4.30 to 5 a.m. While I'm pretty consistent with it now, it took me years to figure out exactly how to shift my sleep schedule earlier so I still get eight hours of sleep every day while getting up really early in the morning. Now that university has pretty much started for everyone, a lot of people are asking me what can they do to get up earlier in the morning. That's why in this video, I'm going to break down a step-by-step -step systematic process which you can use to completely reset your sleep schedule and get up as early as you want. If you're new here, my name is Amon. I'm a student studying computer science and economics, and the techniques discussed in this video are mainly focused on getting up earlier in the morning, but you can reconfigure and apply them to making any sort of change in your sleep cycle. Timestamps are in the description. Let's get to it. So first we should talk about what actually creates your sleep cycle and what influences it. And the scientific term for your sleep cycle or sleep schedule is your circadian rhythm. Everyone generates their own circadian rhythm. It's a force that lets you know when you want to be asleep and when you want to be awake. It's a constant 24 hour tempo that keeps our sleep cycle in check. It also controls many other rhythmic patterns such as your hunger levels, your moods and emotions, your core body temperature, your metabolic rate, and many more. One interesting thing about your circadian rhythm is that it is internally generated, meaning that it exists outside of the daily cycle of light and dark. This is proved in a landmark study in 1938 when Professor Nathaniel Kleitman and his assistant Bruce Richardson at the University of Chicago took a trip into Mammoth Cave in Kentucky. They spent six weeks in total darkness measuring their sleep slash wake times and their internal body temperatures. What they found was incredible. They kept a regular interval of around 14 to 15 hours of wakefulness with a nine hour period of sleep on average, which resulted in a daily cycle of around 24 hours regardless of the light or dark outside of them. While you do generate your circadian rhythm, it is subject to external cues such as light, food, exercise, temperature, and social interaction. It's those external cues which we can artificially manipulate and craft to influence your circadian rhythm and shift it forward or back. I'm gonna break down a step-by-step -step routine which you can use to fix your sleep schedule. You don't have to adopt all of these behaviors, but as long as you adopt a few of them, you should find that it gets remarkably easier to get to bed earlier and wake up earlier. It all starts the night before. Even though you're trying to get up early in the morning, it is absolutely vital that you maintain at least seven to eight hours of sleep every night. Total sleep time is something you absolutely cannot compromise on. In his book, Why We Sleep, Dr. Matthew Walker states, the short the shorter your sleep, the shorter your lifespan. The old maxim, I'll sleep when I'm dead, is therefore unfortunate. Adopt this mindset and you will be dead sooner and the quality of that shorter life will be worse. When shifting your sleep schedule, it's important that you set a constant wake up time and stick to it. For example, if I was waking up at 6 a.m., I would set that time down and try to follow it as long as possible. Then I would measure eight hours back to 10 p.m. and note that time down. These are two absolute times that you're going to try to stick to as much as possible. I usually begin the process of getting ready for bed about an hour before my absolute sleep sleep time, so if my absolute sleep time was 10 p.m., I would start getting ready around 9 p.m. What I would do, at least when I started getting up early for the first time, was set an alarm on my phone an hour before my absolute sleep time, in this case, 9 p.m. That way, I'd remind myself that it's time to commit to this and start getting ready for bed. This is the most important factor of getting up early. It's so important to set a consistent routine and to follow it even on weekends, even on off days. It's also vital that you make sure you're getting at least seven to eight hours of sleep every night. Without that key condition, nothing else in this video even matters. All right, so let's set up your sleep environment the night before. The environment you sleep in has a massive effect on how easily you fall asleep. First of all, whenever that alarm goes off to let you know you have an hour before you need to get to bed, it's important that you turn off all of the harsh lighting around your house. Light is one of the external cues which can influence your sleep cycle. This means you turn off electronic devices as well. I like to keep off electronic devices at least an hour before bedtime. If I have to use my phone, I make sure that it's on low brightness brightness and night shift, so it doesn't really bother my eyes that much. Additionally, you want to make sure that your bedroom is very dark. This means you close the blinds if it's bright outside and you turn off all lights inside your room. Blackout curtains are really helpful for cities or places that it doesn't really get as dark at night. Now that we've talked about lighting, I'm going to talk about temperature. Temperature control is a key aspect of getting a good night's rest. You want to make sure that it's not too hot and not too cold so that you're comfortable while you're sleeping. But if you have to pick one, it's better to err on the cold side. This is because your body naturally decreases your internal temperature when initiating sleep. 
So if you can help the process by having a cooler bedroom, it would help you fall asleep faster. Another way you can use your temperature to your advantage is to take a hot shower or bath before bed. The drop in body temperature right after you get out of the shower or bed can help you feel sleepy. And overall, I feel like ending the day with a shower or bath is a very relaxing and calming way to get to bed. I also like to have the fan on because it provides a nice white noise and keeps me cool. Let's talk about the next day. If you got up at your wake time, congratulations, you just started your journey to becoming a morning person. However, chances are that even if you got eight hours of sleep, you probably felt absolutely exhausted as soon as you woke up. This happens to pretty much everyone is trying to change their sleep schedule, regardless of the amount of sleep they get on the first day. Hopefully you battled through it and still got up, but in case you didn't, here are some tips that I use to make sure I don't sleep through my alarm. I like to place my alarm on the other side of the room and put a glass of water right next to it. This way I'm forced to walk across the room and the glass of water keeps me hydrated while also getting me alert enough to make sure I don't crawl back into bed. You'll probably feel exhausted this whole morning. Don't worry, that's completely normal. That tiredness you felt today will hopefully help you get to sleep earlier the next night, which will in turn create a feedback loop which will help you get up earlier the next day. The more you stick to your schedule, the more you stick to your routine, the less tired and more alert you'll feel every single day. Now that you've began your day, daylight is one of the most powerful tools you can harness to help you adjust your schedule. I would suggest leaving your blinds open if it's not too bright outside, so that when the sun comes up, your face is blasted with sunlight, which tells your brain to wake up. Additionally, I like to go outside and take around a 20 to 30 minute walk early in the morning. This way I'm getting as much daylight as possible as early as possible, which in turn will help me fall asleep earlier and get up earlier the next day. Let's talk about caffeine. Caffeine is a very powerful tool, but it can be overused. Caffeine can have a massive effect in your sleep. It can take over eight to 10 hours to completely wear off. So try to avoid caffeine after one to 2 PM. I like to have a cup of coffee early in the morning. But in the afternoon or evening, I usually switch for a cup of chamomile or peppermint tea. Exercise is also another really powerful tool you can use to affect your sleep schedule. Exercise and sleep feed off of each other. Intense exercise earlier in the day can help tire yourself out, which can help you fall asleep faster. In addition, a full night of rest can help muscle recovery and increase your energy levels, which can fuel your exercise for the next day. Try not to exercise too late in the day, however, at least not two to three hours before your bedtime. I like to exercise around one to 2 p.m., because that's when I feel a little bit tired, so exercising helps keep me productive and energized. Also, there are less people at the gym during the workday, which keeps it more safe. Another thing that can affect your sleep are naps. Naps can help make up for lost sleep, but if you take a nap too late in the day, it can counteract your ability to fall asleep earlier. There are times where I feel really tired in the afternoon, but I always tell myself that if I take a nap, then I won't be able to fall asleep that night. Just to recap, here's a list of short tips that you can use to maximize your potential to wake up earlier in the morning. First, pick the time you want to wake up and then measure eight hours back and set that as your definitive bedtime. Try to keep this bed and wake up time as consistent as possible because that consistency will fuel your ability to wake up early over a long period of time. In the night, keep your room dark and cool. Try not to use electronic devices or be near bright lighting an hour before your bedtime. Set your alarm across the room and place a glass of water next to it. The next day, try to get a large amount of daylight earlier in the morning. Exercise during this time can help as well. Don't consume caffeine closer than eight hours to your bedtime and don't take a nap past 3 p.m. Hopefully if you follow these tips over an extended period of time, you'll slowly but surely shift to becoming a morning person. If you enjoyed this video, you might also enjoy my video on maximizing to-do lists, as task management has always been part of my evening routine. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.